Hi guys, welcome back to the Long Shot Podcast and I have a very special, <laughs> special guest, actually a long friend of mine that I met, I don't know how long, 2012, maybe <laughs> during my poly days, uh, yeah. it's Kirstin Ong, our own national hurdler, am I right to say that? Hello! Yeah. Hello yes. Kirstin! Uh, and one thing about Kirstin is uh, she's doing her degree as well, is it degree? Yes! Yeah, and SUSS. So, and she's also a sports... SMU! SMU! SUSS. <laughs> SMU. Uh, and yeah, she's also managing all this time, you know, uh, being an influencer and all, after I see so much. Oh. Right? And as ambassador also. So, uh, yeah. most of our students or our youth out there who are watching this, uh, you guys, I can, those who wants to be an athlete and also pursue your education I think Kirsten is the person that you can also take a lot of insights from. Lah. So, you yeah, should look up yeah. to her. So, yes, I hope, hopefully, you can inspire more yeah. young hopefully. athletes. Yeah. yeah. How about uh, maybe you want to tell us a bit more of yourself, Kirsten? I'm in my final year in SMU, so I'm studying marketing and communications. And I'm also on the sideline, I'm also a social media influencer. So like this social media influencer, I think this is something that many um, young athletes are also like wondering how this works or how mm. this goes. How, how do I incorporate yeah, yeah, yeah. it in my life when I'm studying and training as well? But actually like this social media thing, honestly, like I can share more later, but this thing really benefited me a lot in supporting my sports and studies. Like really a lot. Yeah, and I really manage? enjoy this. Yeah. Sorry? How do you manage your time like that? Actually, like, these don't really take that much time. La. Really? Like, for example, it, it's been very helpful in terms of like financially. You know, mm. I don't have to work part-time outside. You know, the pay isn't great. And I need to stand for really long hours. And imagine if I stand for really long hours and then I still have to go train. My legs will be damn tired by then. I wouldn't even be able to train well. I, or I won't have enough time to study afterwards. So this social media, honestly, it takes like maybe like five minutes to take a photo. That kind of thing. So, and the money like... like you know, so, for someone. Yeah, it's been very helpful, you know. I, yeah. I, it gives me more time to rest, to study whenever I need. So that's why it's been helpful. Apart from, it supports me in my gears, like by Under Armour. But on the sideline, I also take like pro bono, not, sorry, not pro bono, like one-off jobs from like companies. What's it called? Right, Freelance? Okay. Freelance? Freelance, yeah. yeah. Freelance, yeah. sponsorship, yeah. because of right? Yeah, yeah, one-off like advertising, advertising stuff for them. So those are helpful. Yeah. I've seen I've seen Kirsten go la, I would say in terms of like social media like <laughs> when she was like But then away. like Instagram just started. Yeah, so I was like well, like wow oh, okay this this athlete that I know of, you know, I was like <laughs> Wow, you know, maybe, maybe I know later. So I know Ramdan since like fifteen years old. And I only wow, got Instagram yeah. when I was fourteen years old. Yeah. So yep. obviously back right then the Instagram with those filters back then. <laughs> yeah, it's like the, 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 the journey was like, whoa, you know? And then like, uh, wait, you, when you were 15, I mean, I was 70. How old are you now? I am 32, 22, right? I 23. Got, hey, wait. I think I Is was. Is it? When was, uh, how old were you? Four years older than me. Yeah, so you were 19. I was 19 years old. Wow, 19 years old. Oh my god. You don't remember how old were you? <laughs> I can't remember how old I am, to be honest. Like, now, yeah. okay, when you are at my age, at Alan's age, right? So all you okay. know that you're not, you, there's, there's a saying, yeah, like, you, you all you know you're age. not 30 years old. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, Once okay, you're 30, 30 you know. <laughs> Once I'm 30, yeah, okay, I know I'm 30 already. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like, I mean, okay. Christine, I hope I hope you can actually, like, share, like, maybe some tips, like, how, because not, not everyone's, like, could be or, have the courage to be an influencer. So ah, maybe you can share later okay. on. Yeah. So back okay. back to your athlete life. Right? Maybe, <laughs> how, maybe. How, did you, how did you start being <laughs> in the sports industry, maybe for sports school? Because is from sports school, like, guys. Yeah, yeah, okay? yeah. Yeah. So how, from there, perhaps how do you see yourself like go from there up until now? Ah, uh, okay, because I joined the sports school during the P6 trials, the primary six school mm. trials, you know. And then almost every school will have all these trials. And I started track and field when I was 10 years old. But it wasn't something that I've always um, thought I would pursue fine. It was just something that I could spend my time in. Because I, I love to run about. I really just thought it was something that I can kill my time. And so when I was 12 years old, my primary school teacher asked whether I wanted to try, try the sports school trials. Yeah. 
And I'm like, yeah, sure, okay, because it's on Saturday, I'll just skip my Chinese tuition, and I hated Chinese tuition. <laughs> so okay. I just went, I didn't even know what is sports school back then, actually. And surprisingly, I got selected. So I had to go through like a few more trials, and somehow I managed to make it through all during the, like, the final trial. I was actually rejected. So I was inside the 100-meter team. So that's why now I'm a hurdler, because just nice, the hurdle sl- spot, there was like, like an extra slot. Oh, so I could interesting. And that's how I... <laughs> okay, that's how okay, like okay. I, I went into hurdling okay yeah and no other schools wanted me as well so only sports school accepted me so I went into sports school so like from then the coaches there really trained and built the passion in mm. me until like today until like now the passion is like burning so strong since back in th- when I was 13 in sports school and, and you just it's very it's very interesting yeah. that you you don't really have like like Basically, you just try for fun, like, when you were yeah. 10 years old. Then yeah. suddenly, you go into a sports school and the passion is there all yeah. the way until now. Wow. It's very interesting that how you can It's really manage. from, like, the passion yeah. that was being built in sports school. Right, right, right. Okay, but do you, uh, think, do you think passion alone is enough? Because you, you oh. started when you were 14 years old all the way until 20 years old. Yeah. Passion enough uh, to be an athlete in Singapore? I think, no way. Eh. Because in, I don't think it, that is enough. Because mm. say like, if I have a passion in it and if I'm not doing well, eventually I'm going to say that, hey, I'm spending too much time in this. I got to cut it. You know, there's other things like pressuring me, like say studies or work. Yeah. You know, yeah. these are more important than my passion because I need to survive in Singapore, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. actually that's true. And even for overseas also, if, even if you have a strong passion and if you're not doing well, you're not going to get the support. Right, so you of course in the end also need to go out and work to support your own self. I know because like other countries they get support when mm. they train full time, but it's different in Singapore. Like firstly, like Singapore don't really support us when we train full time. You know, you can't you can't have full time as like a career in sports. Mm. I guess I, I mean apart from like maybe soccer that kind of thing. Yeah, like yeah. Football. Yeah, so they they are paid, but like for for like my sport or most sports, we're not paid. So it's really hard. Yeah, that's true. So cool, passion alone, passion alone. It can take you far for a while, but eventually when other commitments starts to come in, then that's when something has to go. So, but so for me you still need yeah. like a result oriented. Like if you was being successful in whatever you're doing, like your sports, yeah. then that will actually speak, uh like, encourage you. Yeah. Yeah. Understand. So like over the years, because I see that I am I, I was I was performing quite for many years, like in the youth period. I mean, now, like, with the COVID, there's no competition and all. Mm. So, everything is just in limbo. We don't really know what's next. But before, like, this year, I was seeing results. I was really happy of where I was progressing. So, to me, I was willing, I, I even stopped school to train. I was willing to hold back my studies. I was willing to hold back my career for sports because wow. I had passion. And I, I do see, like, results coming in. I see, like, that it is worth sacrificing certain stuff. But now, I'm approaching, like, my final year in school and... I think the pressure of like, shit, I need to work. Am I going to continue yeah. training? And that is actually like coming out onto me already. Like, is it still worth it to, to hold back my career? Because mm. we all need money eventually. Yeah, this, this is actually the like, most important thing. Ah, because yeah, the financial know, business, yeah, part financial. always is the barrier for our athletes. Yeah, financial. And, and, and we, are, we are not talking only about Kirsten. It's actually a real life uh, experience that all athletes in Singapore is facing like when they are studying plus being a athlete, national athlete this is what they are facing whether the uh, dilemma whether you want to focus on studies or mainly focus fully on sports so it's very hard you know to choose one either one because yeah. both is very important yeah definitely <laughs> but, but I feel that because we are young right if yeah. you don't pursue your sports, then you'll be really wasted. If you have a talent, you know, you, you right, right, right. something that makes you want to chase something mm. and you don't go and explore that, you'll feel that, like, yes, then you're going to regret, like, why didn't I try that? Why didn't I pursue to see mm. how far you go? So I think if you're young, really just go for it. And I don't think we all train, like, the whole day, right? Like, we have 24 hours. Training only takes, like, two, three hours. And yeah. studies can still happen after, outside your training. But so you as require much as require a lot of discipline, though. Yeah, of course, and definitely. Time, like you don't time, go out. Time yeah, time, yeah. Time is <laughs> this is very important. Yeah. But so how how did you manage all that, man? You know, you're a social influencer. <laughs> you're 
you are you are an athlete you full time student uh, yeah you have uh like full time you know you are studying at the same time and then you have your social life okay <laughs> you have your family yeah. life you know yeah like, something has to go lah definitely oh. Yeah, how how do you like? What are some of those advices that you can give for? Because now you see, ah, whenever I like talk to athletes, right, or youth, right, yeah, or even like in the sports, I was also a sports in I was a pursuing an athlete, like football, yeah, right, yeah. But I had to like, okay, last time the old mindset is, you know, parents were like either you do well in your soccer, or you focus on your studies. You don't get both. Yeah, yeah, correct. Right, unless yeah. until yeah, sports comes. Most people like focus on your studies. Yeah, most parents. Right. Yeah. Most like, yeah. You focus on studies, sports cannot make it one. You won't get big money. How do you like do both? Uh, okay, I get what you mean. I yeah. think for me, because I was very lucky to come from the sports school route. Mm. So sports have really catered our timetable very strict. You know, mm. they put up they put aside training timing, they put aside studies timing. Mm. And they I mean I mean like we're always with our friends like all the time, right? So yeah, yeah. our social life was also so there already. So I already came from an environment where where my timetable throughout the day is already very fixed for training and studies. So in a way I feel that for me it was a lot easier to cope because when it's time to train I have to go training. When it's time to study I have to study. But I think for people who's not inside the sports school system, it really comes down to your own discipline. Like if we skip uh, training we can uh, like if we skip school we can uh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Like and then you cannot go home also right coffee you can now and yeah yeah <laughs> And we stay inside boarding ourselves. So our, our the teachers inside we really have like an eye over all of us. Mm-hmm. So I was already very used. I was inside sports school for seven years. So oh, yeah, seven yeah, years. Seven years. Oh, yeah. RP, RP oh. out, right? Yeah, RP years old. So oh, I, I, I see, I see. I'm a poly program there. So mm. seven years. So when I came out to go to SMU, it's a lot easier for me to cope. It's a lot easier for me to sacrifice like social life if I need to. So I think like for outside people, it really comes down to your time management. Like if you, I, I, for me, what helps me was a fixed timing for training, cause I know right. like okay, this is my training, nothing touches to this, so I can plan my other stuff well. And I would say I think outside people they they have classes all day until like morning till like one or two p.m. Yeah. And say, if you wanna do your training at like say four o'clock, two to four p.m. you can rest, you can complete your homework that you have in school. If you you finish your training four to six p.m. or there, and then in the evening time you have time to spend some time with your family or your friends. And then you rest early afterwards. I really think it's just having a very fixed schedule and follow it. So that schedule and schedule. that kind of structure, you must, you must yeah. be there, la, right? And really stick to it. The thing is to stick and to really it. And really stick to it. Yeah, that's the that's yeah. hard plan part. Really stick to it. Yeah, plan something that will suit like your own lifestyle well for the other athletes out there. Like for the other young athletes. Yeah. Mm. yeah I know sometimes like many people like to just head out after school. You know, if you put a train yep. like towards... Like if your training is towards in the later evening, you know, you can spend some time with them first before you go for a training. Yeah, you need to spend a bit less time with your friends. You know, they can spend all the way to the night, but you can't. But if you want to pursue your sports, then you just got to sacrifice some stuff. At least in a way, you still have a bit of social life. You just have lesser. Mm. And is it worth it for your sports? I think yes. You know, it's something oh, that really... I have a, that's I have a very good advice though. <laughs> really? I, I hope yeah. so. It's what really helped me. Even yeah. until like right now. I have, a, I have a, now. a question yeah. on top of my head now. Huh? It's like, yeah. of all your friends, right? Like, from sports oh schools. Okay, yeah. all from the sports I think I know what you're going to ask. Okay. <laughs> how many or how many of them actually pursue sports? Oh my god, I knew you were going to ask me. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I don't know I think, why. I think, I think everyone has that same question. Like, in sports school, there's a lot of athletes. So, uh, only we only see a few chunk of them like, really pursue. So, we okay. really want to know from your My badge? I'm the only one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see, that's the, yeah. that's the, you know, it's like, wow. It's like, and it takes up our rate time. Yeah, so it's like, okay, what? Because because for, for for one person to like really pursue all the way, I think it's a very hard job. It takes a lot of I have no idea. How. I don't know. It's like, like that's why I was asking, is it passion alone that is enough? I, know, because, I, I think passion and like your definitely your results. Because mm. it motivates you to continue staying in this route, right? And then like, I have a quite a strict um structure in my day to day activity. So that helps me to keep going. Interesting, man. Interesting, really. 
if if I were okay, if why do you think some why do you think some athletes continue pursuing? Yeah. Why do you think some <laughs> did, did didn't, didn't continue? Share, share with you on their experience, the reasons why they what makes them or, quit? Yeah. Um, I think mostly it's like for guys at least it's always NS. NS, yeah. Oh yeah. right, okay. But you don't see some like after NS they'll come back, but they struggle a bit, and then you realize also like, hey, they need to work. Yeah, yeah. So I think that mostly is always like work or like studies. They cannot cope. If oh, they want to do it, <laughs> many years ago already. <laughs> they forget yeah, about I think NS, yeah. it's really NS. But I think because for me, like, I was in an environment where like my sports is already very drilled inside me because I was in it for seven years, sports and studies. Mm. And because I use my sports to enter to SMU, mm. you know, oh, because okay. of my sports, I started to have uh, influence in social media. So honestly, right. I feel that everything else that was successful to me afterwards was all because of sports. And I still see results. You know, I see myself still improving in my training. I still feel that there's still something that I still haven't reached. I still want to achieve it. What will you want to achieve in the next couple of years? I still want to make it to SEA Games. So I've been trying since 2015. 2015, okay. yeah. So I missed for like three SEA Games. Already. I'm still trying to qualify. I think this thing feeling like I'm always coming close, but I'm not qualifying. I'm improving, but I'm not hitting the mark yet. Makes mm. me feel like I can get there. I am improving. I can get there one day. So I think this thing also makes me feel like I, I cannot walk away yet. Because I still feel that I got still so much more to give to the sports. I think, I think <laughs> that's actually like your main target you know, to enter SEA Games. Like, you've been trying. that. That's why it really burns your passion. passion yeah. that you really want to train hard for that. It's a goal in mind. The end of yeah. the that you really want that to happen. So maybe that, that's uh, really drive you to keep Yeah, maybe also, yeah, I think goals, yeah. goal setting, you know, you have a goal yeah. that you want to achieve. That's right, yeah. Interesting. What yeah. will be, let's say all this journey, are you say talking about SEA Games, right? And all, right? Yeah. I think it's a good question to pop out, like, what is the lowest point in your life in terms of your journey as a student athlete that you have like, experienced before and how, if you don't mind sharing, like, and how, you know, you get back on track like, okay, I, you know, I'm not going to quit. You know, I still have it. Like, if you, yeah, what's that, you know, what, what experience do you have from there? Or how do you, how yeah. do you, you know, bring yourself yeah, back up? Back up from it, yeah. Um, I think in my sports journey, I had like two lowest moments. Mm. Like the first one is when the first game I tried in 2015 was in Singapore. So, um, like the top two could go. Because okay. it was in Singapore, right? So my, my best timing, I was actually second. But then I wasn't um, selected in the end because I found out that my the timing that I hit the second, I mean, the timing that I hit was two weeks before the qualifying period. And so they couldn't accept the timing. And the next timing they accepted was 0 0.01 seconds away. Wow. wow. So it was, oh, it was very pain for me. So I was like, wow, oh, it was really, really tough for me. So that, that period was... Tough for me, especially because it's the first time that I aim for something and then I couldn't qualify. Right. Yeah, that's why. Because that's especially, like I was still, yeah, I was still a youth athlete. So, so, so I was so, so, trying so. for all the youth competitions and like, this is the first time like, adult competition in the mm. open meet. So I, I never had like, aim for something and then I don't qualify. So that was like, wow, ouch. And I thought that I would make it, you know. Mm. So I think the other really, really like, wow. Should I was really hard, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my coach had to talk to me. No, I lost to my teammate. My teammate went, you know, so it was also quite painful. And my coach was talking to me and like, I know you're trouble, you know. You know, my coach, you know, having to train like both of us and then like one person is so sad, one person is like, you made it like, it's so tough oh, okay. for her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Was, it was a very difficult position so for my coach. But, I mean, if you if you don't make it, you just don't make it. Like, there has to be just one winner and just gotta accept mm -hmm. it. That's the yeah. hard life that's of being an athlete. Sports, right? Win, yeah. you lose. Right, so yeah. I learned how to also manage your loss and I think that actually as much as I was down for a couple of weeks and then next moment I had a call from my association that I was selected to go to the Asian Championships instead. Ah, okay. Yeah, oh, and okay. that is quite a big meet as well. Yeah, and so that, something that you lose, something back. came back yeah. positively. Yeah, so that gave me something to work for again. Okay. So I was very happy. And, uh, and this not being able to make it to again makes me want it even more so that's why over the years I keep trying to improve myself mm. and every year I'm improving but I, I'm, I haven't reached there yet but at least I'm improving and I know that 
I'm coming closer to a goal. Uh. I see, oh, I what? see Christine as an uh, underdog, you know, to be honest. <laughs> like, because I know her from sports school, and I know she's oh been God, trying yeah. so hard. Was, I haven't won one. Yeah, and yeah. like, um, as much as, by. yeah, as much as rivalry between friends, you know, and then like, uh, because sports is sports, you have to compete with one another. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then, still, you know, like, you fail to meet C games and all, but you're still trying. And I feel that, because some people, okay, with, in sports, right, there's always this debate whether you're talented or gifted or oh, yeah. whether you oh, can yeah. work towards being gifted, you know? Uh, because some, yeah. like, you know, when, when let's look at football, like Cristiano Ronaldo is gifted, right? Yeah. But on some top of his gift, he worked his ass oh, off, yeah. right? And, yeah. um, but there's also a debate where, like, oh, this person is just gifted, you don't have to be, you don't have to train, right? So, yeah. it's, I think I see you as a really like an underdog who's like no 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna prove myself worth, right? Yeah. And I think I think that's that kind of mindset that yeah be a student athlete or even like someone who wants to pursue something, you really must I work. Really, hard. I really train bloody hard, man. Yeah, and <laughs> no one okay the, 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 no one realized that hard work. Yeah, people okay. didn't see like that. only only you know what the yeah. uh, the time that you put in. And and plus, uh, I don't really know you personally, but after all the the things that you share with me, I can tell that there, there's a strong determination and always a, there's never give up option for you. There's always yeah. something that you want to get back to it. And this is very interesting because uh, I want to ask like, what are the three things that you might want to give an advice to an athlete um, to, to share? What, what are the character that they actually need to, to have? Or mm. values, yeah, for for youth. Number one, I think is discipline. So discipline meaning that even if you don't do something, because you have the discipline, you will still do it. So often, I think, uh, especially when you're younger, sometimes you you don't really want to go for training or you don't feel good. You just want to rest. But you have the discipline. You know that you have to attend training no matter how you feel, because if you skip one training, it's gonna affect your own performance. Mm. Discipline also it means that. When you know that it's time for you to study, you go study because you are a student athlete, right? Yeah. You don't want to just pursue your sports and then your studies are not there and eventually you might need to stop your sports just to chase up with your grades. But if you stay consistent, yeah, the next thing is consistency. Yeah, you stay consistent as well. You don't have to worry about, I spend too much time in my sports and then suddenly I need to stop my sports so I can focus on my studies. And then like, oh, when, when my exam is done, I can go back to my sports. But if you stay both consistent, you can pursue both well. And yeah. there's a nice balance to it. And I think so like discipline, consistency. And I think the, fi- the last one is definitely like determination. Oh, determination or like passion. Both, both. Like it really comes hand, like together. Because when you have passion, you have the determination to get where, to where you want. Right. Yeah. So once you have this passion inside of you, of these student athletes, you know that you're going to put in all the work that you want to get to where you want to be. So it includes, when you have passion, you're going to have the discipline to get there. You know, yeah. Consistency in the work that you do. Every day you put in the work for your training, for your studies. And I think all this will bring one person far. That's what uh, brought me until like right yeah. now, I'm still training. True. And, um, you know, like before this podcast, right, guys, uh, when I asked Christine, you know, about like when, when she's free, right? She, <laughs> she, she, yeah. she I personally feel that she has time management. She was like, can we do it uh, on this date? And because I have a final year exam to focus on. So to me, it's like, that is discipline. Uh. That is like time management. You know, you, you know your schedule, you know, yeah. and you stick to that schedule. It's like my exam comes first and knowing what is important. Uh, I think that's, yeah. that's, yeah, that's crucial uh, for time management. Yeah. So look to Say you, for example, you. I did the podcast and then I have sports, I have studies, I got exams, like something got to go, my, my sports got to go because mm. exam is pressing at the moment. But if I can push that back, you know, I can still do both my sports and studies. I'll still training even when I'm having exams. You know? I have a last question uh, on top of my head because you being <laughs> okay. a social influencer, right? I'm yeah. pretty sure that, okay, like just now you say you have, you know, actually social influencer have like, you, you know, five minutes of taking photos and all. But do you receive a lot of negative comments? Uh, until now, so far, not much. It's just really mm. like creeps. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> like, a lot. But I would just ignore. Honestly, I just ignore. Normally, like, I just ignore lah. 
I just ignore then like they really can't like, do anything to me. <laughs> I think that's that's a that's a huge thing because like people who, who have mental resilience or strong head like you know a good mindset right they they don't let others bring them down lah. you know like yeah yeah it's also easier to say than to actually do it yep. I mean of course sometimes like it might affect me at times you know people's opinions of me you know, I care about what people think of me of course sometimes mm. it will affect me but I always have to just tell myself you know all these are just like the really small percentage out of the many other positive comments that you receive. And what matters, like, who are they even, like, they don't even, like, impact your own life, personally. Mm. You should always be only be caring for the people that matters to you, the people you love. That's all that really matters. So I focus on all of this. Of course, I think when you're in the public scrutiny, of course, like, sometimes negative, um, negativity will always be there. Haters will be there. Yep. But they don't matter to me, so I don't think I need to put a weight into, like, what they say. Yeah, unless, I'm, I'm, unless like maybe they are, they're supporting my sporting dreams and yeah, okay, I gotta like, care for your opinions. But like, nope. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, we care just, about your achievements. Wow. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I think Singaporeans care about your achievements. Yeah. <laughs> I personally, you know, like, okay, I hope Christine like really achieve one day because I know, I know you've been, you know, trying really, really hard. And I'm waiting for that day, like, okay, you know, all oh, right, because you need to see games. Yeah, we're going to play a podcast again. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, deal, uh, deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, deal, deal. Any last question, Anand, for Kirsten? Uh, okay, I think she really inspired all the youth in Singapore. I mean, those really want to go into sports. And also, of course, like, what you say, in social media, is currently, I think everyone have social media on their own. So yeah. it's it's a matter of like if you receive uh negative feedback or comments, try try not to put that inside your head. And most importantly is your the things that you talk to yourself, your self talk. That you need to keep it on the positive side more than the negative side. That that's actually that like, prove yourself that you can do better than what you are currently doing right now. Yeah. But uh question wise I really don't have anything else. Yeah, I have, I'm so, yeah. I'm honestly I feel a bit inspired also lah. Oh. Really, really, I'm like, from the heart, from the heart. Oh, yeah. because, because we also trying to work hard also on our own dreams, right? And then I see you balancing all of this. I'm like, if if she can do it, right? I'm pretty sure a lot of people can do it also. Yeah, definitely. Can one. Just whether or not the person wants to do it. The discipline part, the consistency part, yeah. and that determination must be strong, lah. If you really want to achieve things, lah. You, you have any last know. words? Christine? Uh, if you, if, like, I just want to tell the people out there, like, if they want to achieve something, you know, you just got to put your work to do it. It mm. comes down to your discipline, consistency, and determination. Yeah. Wonderful. And if like, there's so... any other questions, like, from the, your other viewers watching, you know, they can always feel free to, like, drop me a message. Yep, you can yeah. easily, you just uh, Google Christine Ong and confirm find her on social media. Yes. Yeah, her first, her I never pop out the guys. person, I confirm her. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just drop me a message. I'll be more than happy to like advise anyone further. I hope my my talk today is helpful to some of them out there. Yeah, I think it's it's it makes me happy to like be able to inspire others. Yep. Uh, just so yeah. Other than that, I think um, if you really want to achieve things in life, your own goals, be it sports lah. Not only sports, maybe arts, music, or anything that you want to. Because I think Singapore has it tough being an athlete, and also. Uh, also tough being a if you want to be a musician or that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. Because we we are so drilled in education. Yeah. That other things are not important, but with Kirsten as an example, you know, <laughs> you can achieve it, lah. Really, it's just like I personally have trouble being disciplined myself at times, right? But when I see her, I was like, oh, okay, man, I I see this girl who's younger than me can achieve so much <laughs> in life. <laughs> you know, what am I doing in my life? You know, so. Um, I mean, I not all days are easy, of course. Of course, not all days are easy. Yeah, of course, yeah. of course. Yeah, but like, just put in the work. You, you know, always see the tip of the iceberg like... lah. Yeah. Yeah, but the bottom part, no one knows the grind that she did, you know, training. You know, like what she mentioned, she, like... So I think structure, environment plays a huge part also, like being in sports school. You know, okay. she's, she's already drilled with that structure and environment. Yeah, so I think really you must find your own structure. To that, used to that lifestyle, you know. Yeah, that to go back, yeah, yeah. Even when I get out, it, I apply that into my own life. Because now mm. when I in SMU, like, no one's going to take care of me. <laughs> There's no one to like, baby me. I just got to structure my own self. Yep. Yeah. So I hope you guys find this inspiring, like how we find it inspiring. 
And Absolutely. Yep. If you have any questions, uh, or if you're not following Kirsten Ong, please follow her on Instagram, Kirsten Facebook. Ong. Okay. Yes, please Kirsten follow me. Uh, just you know, sometimes you just need to follow the uh, inspiration people, uh, And if you want to follow <laughs> your idols or role model, I think Kirsten is the best person to also follow in the sports industry. And uh, I hope you guys get as much insights from this podcast. So, thank you, Kirsten. And thank you. We'll see you thank guys you for, for the me. next online content until we hope that Kirsten can achieve Sea Games one day. And then uh, yes. we'll see her in another podcast. You can do it. Yes. Ciao. <laughs> Bye. Bye.